This is a movie that I shot while climbing Mount McKinley on the Ed Cooper led expedition to 1958. We were following the pioneer climb of Bradford Washburn up the West Buttress route that he led in 1951, as described in the Swiss publication, Mountain World. Our amateur group was led by Ed Cooper, with whom I had met on a Mount Hood climb down in Oregon, but got stormed out with him. With him. His uh, rope partner was Fergus O'Connor, a jolly Irishman, but stronger than most. Marty Mushkin, a lawyer in the army up in Fairbanks, and his rope partner was Clarence LaBelle, who was 53, from Peabody, Massachusetts. Then Bob Elliott, a sergeant in the Air Force in Anchorage, was my wonderful partner, and myself from Yakima, Washington. The 16 millimeter movie camera is a Kodiak Royal that I had degreased but replaced it with graphite as the extreme cold would freeze up the camera. This is uh, Don Sheldon landing a, another uh, party of our six member group. Don uh, is a very able uh, pilot. That was Clarence LaBelle who's staking out the uh, the uh, wands for uh, marking the airport, the airstrip on the on the glacier there. This is in uh, mid June of uh, fifty eight. Here we are looking up at uh, Peak Z. In those days, the, some of the peaks weren't even uh, uh, named, they were just labeled. Oh, and here comes Marty Mushkin with his uh, aluminum toboggan sled. And I kind of poo-pooed the idea, but uh, he made it work. And uh, as you know, most parties today uh, do carry a lot of their weights on, on the sleds. Now, my partner uh, was an army in the air, was a uh, sergeant in the Air Force, and he uh, <laughs> raided this helicopter to bring him in, so he didn't have to pay the $130 like we did <laughs> to Don Sheldon. Anyway, uh, uh, Bob Elliott uh, uh, talked him into to landing 7,200 feet up on the Kahitna Glacier uh, at the foot of uh, Mount McKinley. And here we are starting out in two-man teams and, uh, of course, marking our, our way with the uh, wands. This is a, a little offshoot of the Kehiltna, and this is as close as he could get to the park boundary. Now our, uh, we've had a little storm. I had a two-man mountain tent, and you can see how uh, it collapsed. It, it kind of was after our first little uh, storm. These are the uh, food packets that uh, we packed everything into, uh, plastic, so that we could um, uh, carry them easier. Now we're up to the last uh, water, free water that we found uh, at uh, the head of the, uh, of the uh, glacier there at uh, 10,000 feet. Looking down on the Peters Glacier down there. And uh, Marty uh, just wanted to see what uh, would happen if he didn't wear crampons or snowshoes. That's Fergus O'Connor, an Irishman. He, uh, he was kind of the uh, bull bumble of our group uh, in that uh, he uh, taught physical education down at the penal institution in Vancouver, BC. This is the last water we're trying to, that's my partner, uh, Bob Elliott. Okay, here we are at the Igloo camp at Windy Corner. Uh, as you can see, it's, it's uh, uh, pretty exposed there and we built an Igloo as well as a cooking corner so that uh, we had uh, enough room to uh, work even in adverse conditions. And this is our climb up the uh, part of around uh, 13,000 feet. And uh, here we are cooking up at the 16.2 uh, level. And uh, again, a little uh, igloo there too. Whenever we could uh, build an igloo, why well, we certainly did too, even though we had our own tents. 
and this is looking west, kind of a sun, sunset shot of the North Peak. Now we're up to Denali Pass, 18-2, and uh, the weather's starting to close in. And now this uh, is a what we thought was the top, <laughs> but it turned out to not be the top, as I'll uh, relate a little bit later. And that's uh, my partner there, Bob and Fergus O'Connor, carrying the Kelty uh, reserve sleeping bags and tent. And uh, here's uh, Clarence LaBelle, 53, with our ice axes. And we couldn't find a 49 star flag, so we carried up an Alaskan flag there. Because it was just, uh, that's Bob Elliott, my partner, who was later killed on a rescue attempt on McKinley. Marty Muskin, the lawyer from Fairbanks. Ed Cooper, the leader. Uh, and uh, Clarence LaBelle, the 53-year-old, and myself. Here we are congratulating Ed. We think <laughs> we have reached the top, but really it was the Archdeacon's Tower. And we came back down and found these people training for Everest. And one of them had been up there before, and he said, did you come across the flag, the bamboo flagpole of Bradford Washburns? And we said no. So we started out again from 17-2 in shirt sleeves, shirt sleeves. Now we're back up to Denali, the pass there at 18-2, and uh, looking up toward the, the crown of the North American continent there. That's uh, my partner, Bob Elliott. And uh, this is a nice uh, traverse from Denali pass over to the actual summit. And here we are coming up on the final ridge as we viewed it uh, there in about uh, the 2nd of July of 58. There's the flagpole that uh, we had missed on the first attempt. And uh, since we couldn't find a 49 star flag, we uh, Bob carried up this this uh, Alaska flag. And that's uh, what it looks like from the top. Uh, looking down on a lot of clouds, as you know, the interior of Alaska is a lot, uh, uh, lot of moisture and forms these clouds when they uh, strike something as big and cold as McKinley. Now we're swinging around to the, that was the Kittle, the glacier there, uh, 40 mile long glacier. And now we're swinging over to the uh, North Peak, but Bob has to make sure that that 49 star flag, or the uh, Alaska flag, uh, stays. You notice those half mitts because it's uh, minus seven, and uh, you don't want to uh, freeze your your digits up there because uh, that's that's what gets you around. That and your feet are the extremities that you really have to watch out for. Now we're swinging around to the north. That's the North Peak, which is about 800 feet lower. And uh, I climbed that in 66 on a 43 day ascent in, um, from Wonder Lake. Okay, now we're on our way back down. That's the slope uh, reaching there. Uh, and uh, Ferguson is doing, gonna do a little balancing act up here. This is on the ridge we're looking from 16.4 to 17.2 and the summit in the background there. Fergus is doing a balancing act on a rock there with Mount Hunter uh, there in the background. That's 14.7. And uh, this is what it looks like from uh, the top of the peak there. And here we are waiting to be carried off the mountain. Fergus, uh, after three weeks of uh, no baths or wash up, is uh, taking a snow bath. It's a bright, beautiful day out, and uh, we're just uh, waiting for Don to come and get us. <laughs> yes, indeed. That's very invigorating if you've never tried it before. And it only cost $192 for our three-week ordeal on Mount McKinley.